Good day, everyone. I'm Dr. Doni from the Faculty of Education, uh, Department of Educational Management, Planning and Policy. This evening, I will share with you on a very important topic, uh, leadership for inclusive schools. Firstly, I would like to thank the organizers um, in the International Special Education Exhibition, XC2020, for giving me this opportunity to share about this uh, important topic um, how do we lead schools? How do we lead inclusive schools? How do we lead special education schools? What kind of leaderships that is needed um, for this type of schools? A little bit of introduction. In an educational settings, um, students are considered normal if they learn and progress through an academic curriculum and behave in an expected way. Whereas students who do not behave normally, students who do not progress academically well, and students who do not behave in an expected manner, um, they escape the standards, they are likely to be labeled as special. Um, the term special needs is increasingly used in the field of education, and it refers to children and youths who uh, have disabilities or learning difficulties. Malaysia begins its inclusive education agenda in 1994, and this was inspired by its participation in the UN meetings, the United Nations meetings. And during these United Nations meetings, uh, there were certain policies that was developed. Um, we have the UN Convention of Rights of, for the, of the Child in 1989. We have the UN Standard Rules on the equalization of opportunities for persons with disabilities, and this was in 1993. And the UNESCO Salamanca Statement in 1994 is the one that sparked uh, Malaysia's inclusion agenda in 1994. And further on, a few years down the road, we have the UNESCO Biwako Millennium Framework in 2002. And all these four uh, United Nations policies and UNESCO policies emphasizes on one common thing, which is all students deserve equal education without discrimination. It, uh, moving on to the Malaysian context, we have the Malaysian Education Blueprint that was launched in 2012. And in this blueprint, um, especially in chapter four, um, that emphasizes on student learning, uh, the, the emphasis is to move more students with special education needs towards the inclusive education. So this was highlighted thoroughly in chapter four, and especially we were to focus on wave three of his education blueprint. Um, we are looking at in between 2021 to 2025, uh, these are the two things that will be the main focus. Every child with special needs will have access to a high quality education. And specifically, we are looking at targeting to have at least 75% of students with special needs enrolled in inclusive programs by 2025. Special education in Malaysia, what is the statistics and what are the numbers as of date? How many children do we have in our schools? As of June uh, 2019, last year, the Ministry of Education reported that they, we have a total of 87,000 574 special education needs students enrolled in our schools at this present moment. So when we talk about special education in Malaysia, uh, what a sort of spectrum, uh, what a sort of range and uh, what are the sort of categories of these students that we call um, special needs? So students with special needs in Malaysia are those um, who are visually impaired, hearing impaired, those who have speech difficulties, physical dis uh, disabilities, multiple disabilities, and also learning disabilities. And these students are those students such as uh, those who are autistic, those who have Down syndrome, those who have ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, as well as dyslexia. So in line with the existing policy in the Malaysian Education Program, our students with special needs uh, can choose from three different schooling options. They have three options that um, they can further their education on. Number one, they have a special education schools. Now, these schools are schools that is um, have specific training and have specific contents for students who have specific disabilities. Yeah. So, for example, 
You have uh, 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 special education schools where all the students there have disabilities. Yeah, so every single student in that school have a specific uh, form of disability. Another type of school that uh, we have is called Special Education Integrated Program, SEIP. Uh, and this SEIP, uh, we have made, uh, mainstream schools with specific classes dedicated to students with special needs. So these schools is like a normal school. Um, you have normal students going to these schools, but they have dedicated classes and dedicated blocks where students with special needs are integrated in the same school with normal peers. And the last type of schools that uh, they, we have on offer is called Inclusive Education Program, IEP. Now, these schools are just like our normal schools, uh, general schools that we have. It's just that uh, what is the difference between IEP and SEIP is that IEP schools, Inclusive Education Program schools, we have the special education needs students um, in the same classroom as the normal students in the mainstream classroom. So we maybe have, we have maybe one to five students um, sitting in the same classroom as their normal peers. Whereas SEIP, uh, they are not in the same classroom. They are in a separate classroom, but they are studying in the same school. So just to give you a, a, a little bit of a overview on the type of terms that we use. So when we look at the first um, uh, graph uh, uh, picture of exclusion, so we could see that the school community, those are children with uh, normal children, yeah, uh, normal peers. And those who have disabilities are excluded. So they are outside of the school. They, they are not part of the school. So these are what we call exclusion. Segregation, um, uh, what, the picture of segregation sees that Yes, you have um, a school community there, where else you also have another school community, uh, which is specifically focused on uh, people with disabilities. Where else another form of uh, picture called integration is you have the normal students in the school and the students with disabilities are integrated as part of the school. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is what you call SEIPP. Uh, special education integrated programs where the students study in the same school but they are in a separate classroom um, and the last form is called inclusion where uh, normal students and special education students and those with disabilities all study in the same classroom in the same school so what are the type of schools and student enrollment that we have in malaysia so what i'm going to share with you is some statistics that we have as of june uh, 2019. So uh, firstly, we have, uh, as what I mentioned earlier, we have the special education schools. And as of date, as of June 2019, we have about 2,492 special education needs students who are enrolled in this school. Another form of schools we have is called Special Education Integrated Program, the SEIP. And this uh, form of school is very popular where we have the most large numbers of students with 68,874 students with special needs enrolled in this school. And if you were to break it down further um, into preschool, primary and secondary schools, those in preschool numbers 967 students, uh, those who are in primary schools numbers just about 38,000 students, whereas those in secondary schools uh, about 29,000. Um, then we have the inclusive education program um, this is a total of 162,000 students enrolled in this program. Now, if you were to break it down further, uh, we, we can see that those who are in preschools about 247, uh, primary schools is about um, 8,200 students, and secondary schools is about 7.7 thousand um, students. So the uh, we can see here from the statistics that the IEP program, the Inclusive Education Program, seems to be the most popular uh, program as compared uh, to the other three programs. And, and this type of school seems to be the most preferred and the most um, uh, popular ones um, targeted by parents and as well as students to be enrolled. So the Director General of our education, our Dato Dr. Amin Senin, last year, he mentioned that the inclusive education program, the IEP, have seen numbers increase almost on a yearly basis from 2013 to 2018. And just recently, uh, we have 
observe a rise up to 50.5% of special education needs students enrolled in 2018 as compared to only 9.6 students, 9.6% uh, students in 2013. So we could see that there is a very steep rise, um, almost half, 50.5% uh, uh, in 2018 as compared to only a mere uh, less than 10% in 2013. And uh, Part of this is because of the launch of the government's zero reject policy. So uh, in last year, uh, the government launched the zero reject policy in January 2019. And we can see that um, at the launch of this policy, we have 10,948 special needs students have been enrolled in this school since the launch of the zero reject policy. And this has allowed our special needs children to enroll into government schools without any much difficulty as compared to before. And throughout this policy, uh, the government is also actively looking at equipping our schools with more uh, facilities, with increasing the number of inclusive schools, and also placing uh, and training more special education teachers in the schools. So, Coming to the role of school leaders, so what are the roles of school leaders in these inclusive schools? So there are many inaccurate perceptions of inclusion. Um, so one of the roles of uh, school leaders is to provide a clear guidance and uh, provide a clear definition to their school community and the society on what is, inclusive, uh, what is inclusion and what is an inclusive school. So school leadership in special education, um, the literature uh, research has proven that school leadership has a great influence on student learning outcome. So we know that school leaders are second only to teachers in terms of their influence on student learning outcomes. So school leaders do have a great influence um, on students' achievement, on students' outcomes, and the overall students' performance in their schools. School leaders who focus specifically on instructional issues, who demonstrate um, administrative support for special education, and those who provide high quality professional development for their teachers. Research has proven that these leaders uh, produce and enhance the outcome, especially for students with disabilities. And one of the uh, main roles of school leaders is the ability to skillfully engage the school stakeholders. And who are the school stakeholders? Uh, the school stakeholders are those who consist of their students, those who are their teachers, the parents. And the idea is to engage them uh, to share the same values, to share the same beliefs, to have the same coherent vision for the school, to have the same coherent mission of the school. And to, of course, get all the stakeholders on one common mission that is to educate all students well. So what are the role of school leaders in special education? Firstly, the role of um, our school leaders in special education is to provide administrative support. And research has proven that providing administrative support to teachers, um, it helps teachers develop and implement a lot of interventions, a lot of programs that eventually helps impact student performance and eventually helps improve uh, student achievement. So administrative support is a very crucial element and uh, is one of the primary roles of school leaders in special education. Uh, secondly, school leaders need to understand the needs of students with disabilities. The knowledge of students with disabilities has to be there. They need to know what are the spectrums of special uh, education. How does an autistic behave? How does a Down syndrome student behave? And they need to know what are the needs of these kind of students and how to address and help these kind of students. Another uh, important role for our school leaders is to understand the instructional challenges that teachers face. So we know that uh, teaching students with special needs is a very challenging job, is a very challenging um, mission. And um, we need, the school leaders need to understand that it's not easy. Uh, we can come prepared with some instruction, but that instruction maybe needs to be changed. We can come prepared with some lesson plan, but it might work and it may not work. So understanding this kind of challenges and supporting teachers in terms of implementing 
and overcoming these challenges is also a very important um, role by our school leaders. Uh, thirdly is uh, school readers are responsible to devise policies and procedures uh, to facilitate classroom support. So for example, they could look at whether the school has enough teachers uh, to start with. Do they have enough teachers to teach all the students in the class? Is the student to teachers classroom ratio healthy? Does the teachers have enough teaching materials and resources to carry out their instructional programs? Um, do the parents have relevant information about the outcome of the students uh, regarding the progress of the students? Does the teachers have some form of flexibility um, in terms of um, teaching uh, based on their understanding, based on their creativity, based on the needs of the student? Uh, is there some form of shared leadership opportunities? Shared leadership as in um, teachers are able to make decisions. Um, they, uh, we have different leaders and we have different types of people um, being empowered and given the responsibility to take up tasks. And they are given also the responsibility to make decisions. So the entire decision making is not centered on the school principal. Another uh, role for the school leaders is to foster professional learning communities. And this is to ensure that uh, cooperation and collaboration is, happens in the school. And this is a very dynamic and healthy process that happens between a group of teachers and the subject heads. And one of the ways to foster uh, professional learning communities is to ensure that regular meetings are held between teachers and subject heads for them to exchange ideas, for them to exchange resources, uh, for them to learn from one another. Uh, school principals are also encouraged to practice instructional leadership. Uh, this enables our leaders to find necessary resources to support the teaching and learning in the schools. They are able to make reasoned judgment based on students' programs, based on students' outcome, based on students' achievements. So if we have students who are underperforming, we have students who are not uh, performing to expectations, for example, or not progressing well. So the, the instructional leadership practices will enable them to monitor the students, to mentor the new teachers, to, to ensure that teachers uh, know how to implement interventions to help their students, to mentor new teachers on how to um, engage parents, how to ensure that learning happens both in the school and at home, to provide professional opportunities for all staff members. This means that uh, teachers are constantly encouraged to develop themselves, attend training programs, attend professional development programs, continue upskilling themselves. And also uh, instructional leadership enables a uh, headmaster or the school leaders to evaluate teacher performance. So if a teacher is underperforming, if a teacher is uh, under delivering, if the teacher is not uh, performing or delivering the task uh, as needed, what could be done, what sort of intervention, what kind of support could be given to these teachers to further elevate their expertise. Another form of a, a, a role that school leaders could play in a special education school is to develop a cohesive school culture. And what we mean by a school culture, uh, we, we will like a school culture where there is greater trust, uh, there is respect to one another, Teachers respect one another, the principals respect the teachers, the teachers respect the, uh, the, the, the principal. There is a dedicated time for learning among the teachers. There's a dedicated time of learning among the students. There is a dedicated time for learning among the teachers and the students. And also teachers are given some time to reflect on their teaching practices, reflect on the students' achievement and how they could do better. So uh, cohesive school cultures could include shared values and belief. Um, teachers share a common mission. Uh, they share a common goal. And this is all to facilitate both our students and our teachers' motivation and their enthusiasm. And the next role for school principal is to distribute leadership. So the leadership of the school is not necessarily has to be centered all on the school principal. Uh, the school principal could distribute the leadership to the senior assistants, could distribute the leadership to their head of departments, could distribute the leadership to subject experts. So in this case, these teachers will have the expertise in that area knows best. They know what to do. They have the experience, they engage the students, they deal with the students directly. 
they are empowered to make decisions and they are empowered to create interventions to better the student performance. So basically, what are the model of school leadership for inclusive schools? So um, to round up our whole discussion, I would like to propose eight elements um, for a le uh, on leadership for inclusive schools. So firstly, school leaders should provide administrative support. Secondly, school leaders should and must know uh, and understand the needs of the students in their schools. Uh, thirdly, um, school leaders should understand what are the instructional challenges that is faced by their teachers and how they could support their teachers in the school. Uh, fourthly, uh, school leaders should develop a cohesive school culture where there is uh, exchange of knowledge, exchange of ideas, there's a trust, there's a common mission, there's common vision towards the school goals. Uh, school leaders should devise policies and procedures where uh, professional learning uh, communities are created, collaborations are there, and uh, teachers attend professional development programs. Uh, school leaders should foster professional learning communities, uh, encourage this form of communication and cooperation among their teachers. Uh, seventh, practice instructional leadership. And lastly, principals learn to distribute leadership. Uh, so the leadership is not just centered on the principal, the leadership is distributed across to the senior assistant, to the head of departments, and also to the subject matter experts in the school. So uh, that's all from me. I would like to thank all of you for taking this time to listen to this video. Um, uh, providing appropriate educational opportunities for all our students is indeed an, a very ambitious goal, but we need to ensure that no child is left behind. And to ensure that no child is left behind, we need capable and caring school leaders. And this is, uh, these leaders who are capable and caring are needed in every school in Malaysia. So these are the references um, throughout the slides that I have used. Um, so if you'd like to read further on this, please feel free to do so. So thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And um, my email is on the first slide. Um, if you would like to get in touch with me, um, I will be most happy uh, to hear from you. So thank you very much and have a nice day. Stay safe.